Hi there, and welcome to another video of Made with Cables. My name is Mark, my handle on the forums is Andro, and today I'll be giving you the second part of an ongoing tutorial series in how to build audio reactive patches inside of cables. Today we're going to be focusing on learning how to use the bi-quad filter op. This will allow us to isolate certain parts of the audio spectrum like bass, mid or high, and this will make it easier for us to get things like a kick or a snare or a hi-hat to trigger certain events inside of cables. So at the beginning of this tutorial, I'm going to go a little bit into some basic explanation of audio, frequencies, and what filters are, but I'll try and keep it as really as abstract and as simple as possible. Um, and I'm just going to assume you don't know anything about audio, basically. If you do, don't worry, it's going to be short and you can just jump right into the rest of the tutorial. So I'd like you to pause the video and just make what you see here. Great, let's get started. So first of all, we just want to be able to play an audio file. So I'm going to click here, press escape, and I'm going to type in audio buffer. Hold an audio file or a sample. I'm going to drag this out. I grab the audio buffer player up. This allows me to play back that file. And I'm going to click and drag this out. And I'm going to grab the output up. And this allows you to send the signal to your speakers. I'm going to put the volume in 0 0.25 because I'm doing the tutorial today. One is the default value. So now we need to load an audio file. So I click on audio buffer, click on file, for a new file manager, I scroll down here, and I'm gonna grab Anthony Naples, this track here. I'm gonna close this. I'm now gonna press escape and create a play button. I'm gonna grab the clicked false output, and I'm gonna plug it into start stop, like you see there. If I now press play, we get music, if I click the play button up and click reset, it stops. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to create a uh, bi-quad um, filter up, basically. So I'm going to click and drag this out. I'm going to make a bi-quad filter. Different kinds of audio effects and filters. I'm going to press enter. Let's move this over here. So if I click the up, we have type of filter. So we have all pass, low pass, high pass, band pass, but I'm going to be using these three today. So I'm going to jump to a different um, tab so I can give a little bit more of an explanation of what's going to happen. So sound and frequency is split up into a range going from left to right. So sub bass, bass like low frequencies that you feel with your body, they're around here. Um, then we have upper bass, mid-range, upper mid-range, and high end. So this is where a snare is, or like a human voice. This is where like a hi-hat sound is, or like white noise. So today we're going to learn how to isolate a part of the bass to get the kick. We're going to learn how to isolate part of the mid-range to get a snare. And we're going to learn how to isolate the high end to be able to just grab the data from a hi-hat. So let's go back. So I'm going to go over here, I'm going to pull this out, and I'm going to create a basic material up. And then I'm going to make a transform up, and then I'm going to apply that material to a rectangle. I'm just going to pull this down, and we're going to make a new up, the FFT area average. I'll make another tutorial about this in the future, but we're just going to use this to analyze um, what's happening with the, uh, with the audio data. So we get the texture output from here, and we plug it in there. Let's just move this over there. Okay, so we need to analyze the result of this filter. So I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to grab the audio analyzer up, which was covered in the previous tutorial. I'm now going to pull this out and I'm going to grab another trigger extender to just try and keep the patch a bit nice and tidy. And I'm going to pull this over there. Okay, so um, I'm going to press play. And we're hearing the output now from the buffer player, but we want to hear the output from the quad filter. So you disconnect this by clicking with the right mouse button. And we now grab this. So we're still hearing everything. So we now need to put it on low pass. And let's put this now on 100. And as you can hear, we're now only hearing the sub. So now let's grab this array out and plug it into the FFT area average up. Now we don't see anything yet because it needs a trigger. And now you can see the sub bass, which is basically the 100 hertz. So let's just take a quick look. So we're looking at around this part right now. So if I'm now going to put this on 300, we're opening up the filter. And you might think, how is this working? Well, if we go here, this is a low pass filter. 
it allows low sounds to pass through. So by increasing the frequency number to the right, we're moving this to the right in the frequency range. High pass is the same, it allows high sounds to pass through, starts on the right, and we roll that to the left. I'll get back to the band pass in a moment. So let's just open this up for a minute so you can just hear the difference. 500, 1500, 3500, 10,000, 20,000, which is pretty much almost everything. So I just wanted you to just hear what was happening there. So we're going to put it on 100. So we've got just this sub bass right now. So let's click the audio analyzer. Um, and let's just check the kicks. So let's scroll down a bit. And we're interested in this part that you see at the bottom there. Min 0.01, max 0.05. So I'm going to pull this out, and I'm going to grab a new op, the Threshold op. This will send out a trigger if the Threshold is crossed, but it won't send out another trigger until the value drops below the Threshold and raises above it again. This stops you just getting like a million triggers if the sound is above the Threshold. So I'm going to put it on 0 0.045. And now I'm going to grab the Bang up. So the Bang up, if I click it, and put the duration on one. As you can see, when I click bang, it goes from one to zero like this. So we want to get that kick to trigger this. So now if we pull this out and press F, watch what happens. It's only going off with the kick. So I had to learn to like tweak these numbers a little bit to get it to respond the way that I wanted. But the, the basic idea here is by using the bi-quad filter and isolating the bass, we're not got the snare or the hi-hat or any other sounds coming in, and it makes us easier for to grab this peak out from the kick. So as you can see, we now get this pattern with the kick, okay? So now I'm gonna put the duration on 0 0.5. I'm now gonna copy this part here. Control C, click here, Control V. Gonna move it up. And you know what? Let's just move the, um, the FFT um, section to the left. Oh, wrong one. Sorry, I need to click transform. There we go. So I'm going to move that to minus one. And I'm just going to make all these smaller because I need to be able to fit a few of these rectangles on the screen. This one as well. And Great, okay, and now let's just actually just move it over there, and we're gonna move this one there, minus 0 0.25, great. So now this bang, we're just gonna get it, and we're gonna plug it into scale, and watch what happens. Great, so you don't even need this part here, it's just so you guys can see what's happening. So. It's really quick, simple, and easy to just use the bi-quad filter to isolate a part of the audio and then to be able to use it. So the bang, let's just go through this one time. We isolate the bass, we analyze it, we're grabbing the average volume out, we pass that into threshold. When the value crosses the threshold and it goes above it and below it again, and above it, it's, it's sending a trigger each time. You can press F for flow mode for that. And each time that trigger comes out, we use bang, and that's going from one to zero over 0 0.5 seconds. So we could put this on 0 0.2, and it'd be a lot faster. So the best part is we can now reuse this part. Just gonna zoom out a touch. I'm just gonna press stop. So now I wanna use a band pass to grab the snare. So let's just disconnect this. Let's get this FFT area average part. Let's disconnect that as well. So we're gonna just copy this part here. Control C, click here, Control V. So we're gonna get the audio from the audio buffer player. We plug that into the bi-quad filter. We're gonna pass this trigger through from here just to keep it nice and tidy. We can move it all down a bit. Um, and we're now gonna to listen to this filter. So we get that audio output and we plug it into here. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this on band pass. And I want you just to listen to this for a minute. Oh, and let's connect the area array out into the FFT area average. Okay, I'm gonna press play. So now I'm gonna get the bi-quad filter. So I'm band pass, I'm gonna put it on 2000. And you can hear this like really thin, tinny sound. So if I put it on 500, so this isn't a low pass filter, it's a band pass. This we're sliding left and right. So now we want to move this over here to like grab the snare. 
So I'm going to put this on 2000. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the Q. So I'll show you the Q. This is like a low Q and this is a high Q. When you push the Q up, it becomes more narrow and higher. So let's just take a look at that. So this is a band pass, okay? So Q on 100 gives us really like low, like really narrow um, amount of frequencies. We're just grabbing it around there. We turn the Q to 10, we grab um, a lot more um, sound. We put it on one, we grab a lot here. So it's not exactly one to 100 with our op, but that's okay. So I'm gonna put the Q on three. And you can hear that little resonant peak, five. So we're isolating more and more frequencies. So I'm gonna put it on three. So now I just want to, again, know what the um, min maximum is, right? So I'm just going to click Audio Analyzer, scroll down. I'm just going to hold my mouse here, and it's going to tell me. So the minimum is zero, max is 0 0.21. Okay, so I do believe I've got to move this over here. Yes, I was forgetting to do that. Let's give it a different color. So this is going to be the snare. Okay, great. So I'm now going to put the threshold on 0.12. And as we can see, once in a while, it's getting a trigger from the kick, maybe the hi-hat. I've not tweaked this to perfection. That would take a lot longer than I have today. Um, actually, let's just, let's just try it. So we're going to get the bi-quad filter. I'm going to put this on. Yeah, okay, so now we've turned the cue up, and now we're only getting it on the snares. Okay, now this works, this works. So we just boosted this resonance peak up. So this is great. So that's all we had to do to get the snare going. So I'm just going to press reset. And now we're going to move the output over here. I'm going to disconnect this. And as you can see, we can reuse this now. Control C, Control V. I'm going to pass the trigger through over here. I'm going to grab the audio from the audio buffer player. Let's move this over here to the middle. So it's a bit more obvious what's happening. We can move these over just to bring everything a little bit closer. So now I want to grab the hi-hat, okay? So first of all, let's plug this hi-hat filter into there. Now let's get the audio analyzer array output and plug it into here, just so we can visualize what's going on. Okay, and now we're going to use a high-pass filter. We want everything in the real high frequency range that's around here. So I'm going to click the bi-quad filter. And I'm going to put it on high pass. And now I'm going to put the frequency, say, on 15,000 hertz, because like a hi-hat is just like noise. I'm going to put the Q on 1. Let's take a listen. So we now need to move that rectangle over again. Let's say 1.25. Let's change that color. So with the bang, it's, uh, it's really jittery. So I'm just going to get rid of that. So we've got the threshold. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this out. And I'm going to grab the toggle bool up. And the one thing I forgot to do, obviously, was to look at the min maximum. So let's take a look at that. So it's 0, 0 0.31. OK. So let's put the threshold here and say 0 0.125. I'm going to press F. This looks about right. So we've got the toggle bool up. So this alternates between true and false on each trigger, as you can see there. So we're now going to grab this. I'm going to plug it into the mighty bool anim op. I'm just going to disconnect this. Plug that in there. Plug this in there so we've got a bit of a tidier patch. OK. And now with the bool anim, I'm just going to say, I want it on linear. I want the duration of sort of 0.1. Um, if it's false, I want it on 0 0.5, and if it's true, I want it on 1. And if we look at the output now, let's just scroll down here. We've got something a bit like the hi-hat that we're seeing. So I'm just going to pull the value out, and I'm going to plug it into scale again. And I still think it's taking a bit long, so let's put the duration on 0 0.05. So, We've now got the kick, snare, and hi-hat, but we want to listen to everything, OK? So I'm going to disconnect this. I'm now going to plug that in here. So right now, the FFT is only listening to the high part. 
We could grab another audio analyzer and listen to everything and then plug it in here, but we don't need to. So to recap, we've got the kick, we've got the snare, and we've got the hi-hat, and we use the bi-quad filter to isolate the kick part with the low pass at 100 hertz. We wanted to grab the snare, so we went to 2000. We really boosted that cue to get like a really high uh, resonant peak just to isolate the, the snap of the snare. And here we use the high pass filter set to 15,000 hertz um, just to grab the hi-hat. So this was the basics on how to use the bi-quad filter to extract parts of the frequency, um, the, the, the audio frequency range from any track. Uh, this could be used with a live band with their kick snare microphones. You could use it to try and track a DJ. You'd have to build a couple of controls into there so that you could just tweak it on the go um, as you're listening to stuff live. But hopefully this tutorial and all these ops that you've seen will give you enough tools to get more and more into building your own audio reactive patches. I'd like to say thanks for watching. If you've got any questions or comments, please feel free to post them under the video below or to post them on the forums. Thanks for watching and have a good one. Bye.